What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwid, and I am back again today bringing you guys another episode of the Upgraded Budget Series, and today we are focusing on the offensive line position. Now, for those of you who are new to this series, you can actually go back. A couple of months ago, I did a series that was based on creating a budget squad of cards that could do a pretty good job competing against some of the top tier cards in the game. Now that there are things like golden tickets and ultimate legends and things like that, that's a little bit tougher to do, of course. So what I wanted to do was create a new budget series and have it have kind of a different focus. And what that focus is, is basically creating the best possible squad that we can with cards that are still somewhat affordable, but ones that are a little bit more expensive than they were before. Um, because before we were mostly talking about cards that were under 10,000 coins. Now we're talking about cards that are more in like the 10 to 25,000, possibly stretching into the 30,000 range. And the reason that we're upgrading the amount that we can spend now is because I know a lot of you have taken my advice from the previous budget series. I've seen it in the comment section. You guys have told me these cards are playing really, really well for me and I'm doing pretty well. I'm winning solo challenges. And some of you have even said that you're winning challenges and head to head seasons or coin games and things like that. So that's awesome. But this is still Madden 25 Ultimate Team, and we should always want to be trying to improve our team. We should never be satisfied. So what I decided to do is take a look at some of the cards that have come out since that point in time, and uh, also some of the cards that were already out, but maybe have dropped a little bit in price since then. So with that said, guys, welcome back, and this is the second episode of our Upgraded Budget Series, and we're focusing on Offensive Line. So very first card that we're going to be taking a look at today we're going to go all the way from the left to the right and we're going to start off with the left tackle position we have a new card that came out pretty recently and uh, this is actually a draft card jake matthews now this is a 96 overall elite card and again guys for those of you who didn't see the previous video that we did on linebackers and i'll make sure that i put a link to that in the description of the video so you can go find it if you want to after this but for those of you who didn't see what I actually decided to do with this new series was rather than compare the cards directly to another card that is already, you know, out and expensive, what I decided to do is just take a look at these individually and uh, kind of break it down based on the other players at the position. So, for example, what you're seeing here at the left tackle position is that 74 speed is actually a green attribute. And green, of course, means good, yellow means decent, and red would mean bad. Now, 74 speed is not good if you compare it to wide receivers, of course. However, comparing it to the other left tackles in this game, it's right up there in the top tier. There aren't many left tackles that are com going to compete with it in speed, which is kind of a an attribute that I think a lot of people overlook with offensive linemen, because when you're pulling with your offensive line, it is very, very important that they're able to get down the field and make the blocks. So this Jake Matthews card is excellent at that, of course. And now the other things that it's pretty good at, we want to make sure that we look at things like strength, awareness, run blocking, pass blocking, and impact blocking. Those are the six attributes that we're going to be focused on today with this budget episode. And uh, then on the far right, you see how many coins it's going for. Now, this is an average of all four consoles. So it might be going for more on Xbox One or less on 360 or you know, who knows, but this is roughly how much it's, it should be going for. So 15,000 coins in this case for Jake Matthews. It does have 94 strength, which is a nice attribute, but of course where it's the best at is that it's an excellent pass blocker and an excellent run blocker. And that's really what you're looking for with an offensive lineman. I think this Jake Matthews card for 15,000 coins is a must add for most teams. Um, you're not going to find very many cards that are even competitive with this anywhere around that price range. And that's actually something that you're going to notice, I think, a lot with some of these draft cards is that they have they actually have high overall attributes. And for some reason, they're really not very expensive. I guess it's because they're pretty common. But when you compare them to other cards that are around the same price range, a lot of times the draft cards are a lot better. Plus, it's kind of cool to have a card that is actually not even an NFL player yet, or at least not an official player in Madden at this point. Moving on now, and we are going to be looking at another left tackle. This one is about half the price. And uh, this card, Trent Williams, going for roughly 8,500 coins. 
Another very good left tackle card. This is an elite road to the playoffs card, 75 speed. Now, there are only like three or four other left tackles that are faster than this, and most of them are going for a repulsive amount of coins. But this one at 8,500 coins, very quick to get off the ball, and uh, he also has good attributes elsewhere. The pass blocking being at 92 isn't spectacular, but it's decent enough. Uh, run blocking at 94 is very, very solid. His impact blocking being only 89, uh, you know, there are definitely better left tackles than than uh, this one when it comes to impact blocking, but you know, 89 isn't too bad. The strength of 91 is very similar, and uh, the 89, again, for awareness, None of those are particularly amazing attributes, but they're all solid enough that they make this card very, very good, especially for 8,500 coins. Um, I think you could definitely make a case that this card is actually even a better value than the Jake Matthews card that we just looked at. Uh, very similar in attributes. It's even a little bit, actually, a little bit quicker. But overall, a very, very solid card. Trent Williams is a beast in real life, and uh, he has a great Madden card, you, as you would expect him to. There are also better Trent Williams cards, of course, but you're not going to find anything for this price that's better. So definitely look into this one if you guys are looking for a card under 10,000 coins to play at your left tackle position. I know it's the most premium position on, on the real-life NFL offensive line, and I think some people would also say that it's the most important position in uh, Madden as well. So... Definitely look into that one if you're looking for a nice left tackle. Moving on to the left guard position, and this is a card that I really enjoy. I used this for a short while on my team. Um, I did actually upgrade to another Logan Mankins card to play left guard, but this one is still very, very good, and it's one that I think a lot of people would probably invest in if they knew how much better it is than most of the other left guards in the same price range. Just at a quick glance, you can see all the green on the screen. It has very solid speed for a left guard at 63. The strength is still pretty good at a 92. The awareness is one that you're not going to find many better cards at other than like your ultimate legends and stuff. The run block being 95, another amazing attribute. That card is going to do a beastly job in run blocking. And the 88 impact block means that when it gets out there on the edge, it is going to smash those linebackers, safeties, and cornerbacks that get in its way if it's lead blocking for you on a screen or anything like that. So definitely a very nice card for run blocking. Now where it does kind of come up a little bit short is in the pass blocking attribute. And uh, this was kind of borderline, actually, between yellow and red. I didn't really know what to go with. But 84, I, I don't really think that it's bad enough that it's red. Because there aren't a ton of cards that are better. There's not, like, 75 left guards that are better than it or anything like that. But there's a solid, like, 30 left guards that have better pass blocking attributes than this. So if you're somebody that goes out and you pass a lot, this might not be the best left guard for you. However, if you're somebody like me who prefers to st set the pace and uh, really control the clock and grind out your opponent, frustrate them, this is exactly the kind of card that you're looking for. Logan Mankins can do an amazing job as a run blocker, and uh, he can really set the pace for your entire offensive line. So I definitely recommend this one as a very solid run blocker. It's not terrible as a pass blocker, but it's not spectacular either. If you if it's going up against, uh, you know, like the Deacon Jones cards that a lot of people put at at the D tackle position, or the Madden 25 JJ Watt, or uh, Warren Sapp Ultimate Legend, or cards like that, it's going to struggle to keep them away from the quarterback. I'm not going to lie to you. But if it's going up against just like a a 97 overall D tackle or you know, like my D tackles, for example, uh, Gerald McCoy and Mar Marcel Darius, it'll probably do a decent enough job against those guys. So I wouldn't be too overly worried about it at this point. But either way, like I said, for 17,000 coins, this is a pretty good buy. Uh, definitely one of the better value left guards, but one of the more expensive guards that we're going to look at in today's video. So moving on from here, and we're going to look at one that's just a little bit less expensive. And that is left guard, 92 overall, another elite card here. And you're going to notice that that's a trend. There's a lot of elite uh, offensive linemen that are fairly cheap. This is Evan Mathis, and it's going for about 10,000 coins. So again, you're going to see that the pass blocking isn't spectacular. Now, also keep in mind when you're taking a look at this that 86 for a pass block isn't that bad for a guard. 
because guards aren't primarily pass protectors, they're primarily run blockers. So that's kind of what these cards are geared towards uh, for the budget series as well as most people are going to be using these to lead block and not really so much in pass protection. Um, you're generally your opposing team is going to have their best pass rushers at the defensive end positions or the outside linebacker positions. So you don't really need to worry too much about your guards in that case. But it's still something we need to look at. We need to you know make sure that our offensive line isn't terrible in pass protection. This one's solid enough at an 86, but it's run blocking being a 94 is very, very good. It has solid awareness at 89, and an 86 impact block isn't too bad either. But the one area where this card is a little bit weak is that it only has 82 strength. So while you see that 86 impact block and you think, okay, it's going to do a decent job, it actually doesn't get as many impact blocks uh, knocking guys over pancakes as you'd expect. Um, it's still going to do a decent enough job, and uh, I, I don't recommend against this card, certainly. But if you can afford the extra five to 7,000 coins that Logan Mankins is going for, I would probably go that direction. Uh, but if you can't, for 10,000 coins, Evan Mathis is going to do a good enough job for most people. I don't really see any reason to think that he's going to get destroyed by very many cards other than the really, really top tier cards. So don't worry too much about that. He's going to do a decent enough job for you. And uh, for an upgraded budget, this is a solid card. Continuing on now, and we are moving on to the center position. And uh, the first card that we're going to be taking a look here at is a Football Outsiders card. So this is a more difficult to find card. However, when I was looking on the auction house, I wasn't having any problems finding it. Uh, I found, I think, three of them at one time and they were all under 15,000 coins. So, you know, 13,000 is a pretty good estimate, I think, of how, how much this one's going for. And the card that we're talking about is Football Outsiders, Alex Mack, the center for the Cleveland Browns. He's 90 overall, which doesn't really sound that spectacular, but honestly, there aren't a ton of great centers in this game. So it's actually a pretty decent card at 90 overall. It's an elite card, like I said, so um, pretty solid overall. It does have 67 speed, which is good for a center. The strength is a 92, which is also pretty good. His awareness is only an 84. Now, I think a lot of people would be kind of scared off by that because you never use your offensive line. So awareness is actually somewhat important. However, my honest opinion is that I think center, if I had to pick one position in my entire team, maybe other than like kicker and punter, it's the least important position because it's really just there to protect uh, if a guy blitzes up the middle. And most of the time, most of the centers do a decent enough job of at least stepping in the way. Uh, if they get knocked over, that's another thing, of course. But the awareness is really only going to affect their ability to pick up the blocks or to assist. If the opposing team's only blitzing three or four rushers, then it's mostly just going to be there to help out the other offensive linemen. So to me, the awareness isn't all that important. Uh, we're not really going to be worried too much about that for a center. But it's run blocking, I think, is a very important attribute, especially for those of us who like to run up the middle. Um, I know there's a lot of people out there that actually like to do quarterback sneaks as well. And this card will do a pretty good job of lead blocking for you. It does have 90 impact block and 94 run block with that 92 strength. So it's going to be able to push the opposing team's nose tackle or defensive tackles back. So that's always a nice thing. The 85 pass block, just like the guards that we looked at, that's not very uncommon for a center. It's not a bad attribute. It's kind of right in the middle of being decent, but not quite good enough where I would put it as a green attribute for a center. So overall, a pretty solid card. Only 13,000 coins here. Not a lot to spend to get a good center. This is one that I've actually considered upgrading to because I don't know if you guys have seen my lineup lately, but I'm still rocking that gold Ryan Khalil. That's 88 overall. So this is one for just a couple thousand coins extra that I can upgrade to and uh, possibly get some nice upgraded attributes from. So something to think about for you guys as well. This is, like I said, it's a cheap card and a good one. Moving on to the next center card. And uh, that one that we're going to be looking at is Nick Hardwick, another elite card. Again, lots of elite cards. It's not a, not a surprise. There's not really fantasy cards and, and there's not really playoff cards or anything like that for offensive line. So it's pretty much gold elite legend. And that's about it. <laughs> so you're not, you're not going to see a whole lot of uh, other things other than elite cards, in, at least in this episode. 
Now, at first glance, you guys are probably noticing that this card actually does have a couple upgraded attributes. Uh, the awareness is higher, and the run block and the pass block are both one higher than the card that we just previously looked at with Alex Mack. And the reason that I decided to put this one as the second card, and it's actually a little bit cheaper, so you could make the case that it's a better value, but the reason that it's second on this list and not first is because its strength is only 88. And strength is so vitally important for offensive line that I, I just feel like even though it does have the better run block and, and pass block by one, the fact that it's four worse in strength is significant enough that I am going to bump him down just a little bit. The impact block remains the same, speed they're essentially the same. Um, it does also actually have a little bit upgraded in awareness, but again, I'm not really worried about awareness for centers. So overall, I do think that this is a very solid card. You could definitely make the case that it's better than the Alex Mack, and especially considering it's like 4,500 coins or so less. Um, you know, again, you could definitely make the case that it's a better value, but overall, my personal opinion, all things the same, if they're the same price, I'd rather have the Alex Mack just because it's got better strength. So with that said, let's move on now to the right guard position. And coincidentally, both of the two cards that we're going to be looking at at this position, both play right guard for the Kansas City Chiefs. I know that sounds crazy. They're actually both football outsiders cards as well. First one is going to be Jeff Schwartz, and this card's going for about 11,000 coins. Of course, you're going to notice right away there's a red attribute, which is not good. 58 speed is pretty ugly for Jeff Schwartz. However, it's really good in all the other attributes. It's 92 strength is very solid. The pass blocking at 89 is it's pretty good. It's very close to the border of, I think if it was a 90, I would have probably given it a green attribute, but you know, might as well be green for, for all intents and purposes. 94 run block is an excellent attribute and 90 impact block is a very good attribute as well. This one's 11,000 coins. Awesome value. Seriously, a really awesome value. I, I would definitely recommend this card. And this is probably the one that I would have chosen if it was available at the time that I was making my upgrades to my offensive line. But instead, I actually went with the second card that we're going to be taking a look at here. And uh, that one is John Asamoah. John Asamoah is a card that I think a lot of people are overlooking. But look at these attributes. 69 speed is a significant upgrade from the Jeff Schwartz card. The 89 strength, still very good. Not super spectacular, not to the point where it's green. Once again, um, the pass block is something that we are a little bit worried about because it's only an 85. But again, you're not really worried so much about the pass blocking for a, an interior offensive lineman as you would be if it was an exterior or one of the tackle positions. 88 impact block is solid. 80 awareness, again, I'm not so worried about awareness for interior offensive linemen. It's just not something that I'm super concerned about. But, of course, it is something that is significant because you don't use any of the offensive linemen, so that's why I include it. But 96 run block. Whew! That's why I went with this card <laughs> when I was looking at uh, upgrading my offensive line from uh, Mikey Potty, which was my previous budget squad left guard uh, slash right guard position. I said you could put one at each, and I actually did do that for a while. Uh, but this card, 96 run block. What a beast. It's it's a very, very good card. Um, I highly recommend this card. I've been using it. It's my starting right guard right now, and I don't really see any reason to upgrade it other than maybe to upgrade to the Jeff Schwartz. But again, you know, they're pretty much, for all intents and purposes, the same essential card. They're both very good uh, run blockers, not so great pass blockers. So... I think that the Asamoah card is definitely one that I would recommend, especially for 9,000 coins. Moving on to our final position here, and I know this video is getting long, so thank you guys for sticking with me, but I want to make sure that I go over everything. Right tackle, we do have another draft card, and this is actually Zach Martin. And no, just because I'm a Cowboys fan doesn't mean that I'm throwing this card in. This is actually a really, really good card. He has excellent speed for a right tackle at 68 speed. Uh, the strength is 90, which is pretty darn good. Awareness being an 81 is a little bit of a concern, and it's right on the borderline of where I would have considered this a red attribute. If it was probably an 80 or, or less, I would have considered it red. But when you look at its run blocking and pass blocking, combined with the 87 impact block for a right tackle, very, very nice. This card is going to get out there, and it's going to lead block for you on sweeps and things like that if you're like me and you like to run to the outside. This is a great card, especially for 9,000 coins. 
seriously, you can really do serious damage if you upgrade your offensive line and it's going to cost you probably less than 50,000, maybe maybe 60,000 coins at the most to get very, very good offensive linemen. And uh, I think I would highly recommend doing that if you guys are somebody like me who likes to run the ball a lot. Now, the very last card that we're going to be taking a look at here is the final edition, Austin Pastor. And uh, he's a Jacksonville Jaguars player. This is actually his only card in the game. It's kind of funny that it was a final edition. But 7,500 coins. This one is kind of... It's not as good as uh, the Zach Martin card. And considering it's only 1,500 coins cheaper, I would just recommend going to the Zach Martin card. But... It does still have pretty good run blocking. Its pass blocking is very good. Impact block isn't quite as high, and its strength isn't quite as high, and its speed isn't quite as high as the Zach Martin card. But still, pretty pretty solid overall. And the nice thing about these Final Edition cards as well is that uh, when you're getting rid of them, you can actually collect them eventually and uh, get yourself a nice upgraded card at another position. So that's always something that's kind of a, a nice little bonus for the Final Edition cards if you're getting rid of them. So with that being said, guys, that is going to do it for today's Budget Squad video. This is probably going to be the longest video of the series, and I apologize that it's like 20, what, it's going to be like 22 minutes long by the end of this rant that I have here. But uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you again for sticking with me. I do appreciate it. I hope you guys are enjoying this series. I know I got a lot of comments on it that a lot of people were excited that we brought back the uh, Budget Series. So I hope, like I said, that you guys are enjoying this. I know that some of you had mentioned in the linebackers video that I kind of went over the budget of what you were comfortable spending. And I'm going to try and keep that in mind, although I, I don't recommend spending a ton of coins just in general. Uh, the reason that I put some of those more expensive cards at the linebacker position is because linebacker is hugely important. And I don't think offensive line is a position where you need to spend quite as much money. So that's why you see less money spent here on offensive line than you do at linebacker. It's just the value of the, of the position, in my personal opinion. So with that being said, again, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. Subscriptions mean a lot to help grow the channel. And of course, it will also tell you when I'm putting out new videos, whether it be a budget squad or pink slips or different things like that, giveaways. Keep that in mind, guys. Thank you for everything that you guys do watching my videos and supporting them. Make sure you leave a comment if you guys have another card that is good as, as a budget squad. I'm interested in hearing what you guys have to say. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.